Continuing our series detailing the secrets of Red Dead Redemption 2, I'd like to welcome you all to part 3. You're listening to Phil of Phil B Gaming, and today I have yet another 15 secrets that some players are yet to discover. This could be anything from locations, NPC interactions, or nods to the original title from 2011. If you feel there's anything that should have made today's list but didn't, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Each secret will have its own chapter, so if you're watching one you're already aware of, you can go right ahead and skip to the following. Of course, if you enjoy what you see, please hit like and subscribe, and share with friends and family, or anyone you may feel would enjoy content such as this. Please be aware, there will be potential spoilers ahead for the game. Just before we head in, I want to take a moment to tell you guys quickly about NordVPN and how it has something that all you gaming fans out there might just be interested in. NordVPN has, among many other features, an ability to let you change your current location settings on your phone, laptop, tablet or even your smart TV and router. So how would this benefit gamers like us? Say for example, you want a specific game, but you feel it's too expensive. With NordVPN, when you change your location, you may be able to find the same game but at a cheaper price from a different country. And right now, up until February 8, 2023, they have a limited deal at 59% off. If you want to grab this deal before it ends, you can do so by using the link I provided in the video description below. On a quick side note, this feature will also allow you to view such things as Netflix from other countries too. With that being said, let's get back in what we came here to see. 15 Secrets Still Unseen by Some Players Part 3 Kicking things off with number 1, players who venture to the west of Ansberg, not far from Old Grey's Run, may have come across this abandoned cabin, which we come to learn to be called Martha's Swain. Inside is the body of poor Martha, cause of death unknown. A little past her body, upon the table, is a letter. As always, I'll leave the contents on screen for a moment, so if you wish to pause in order to read it, you should do so now. To cut a long story short, the letter is addressed to Martha and was written by her life partner, Garfield, back in 1864. Garfield is a soldier fighting for the South during the Civil War with the North. It goes on to explain how he is heading into battle but does not wish to do so. He yearns to leave the military and spend the remainder of his days with Martha. In the letter, he mentions how General Harris, a top commander for the South, has been known to shoot deserters. Garfield is of course referring to the Battle of Bolger Glade. If players choose to head to the location I've marked, they will in fact find the remains of the troubled lover, learning that he has been tied to a tree and executed, seemingly by his own general. On his person is a second letter. This time, it's a return letter from the first, dated around six weeks later, and has been written by Martha. Once again, I'll pause for those who wish to read. To recap the contents, Martha is begging for Garfield to return to her, stating that she doesn't care if he's seen as a coward. We can see that Garfield took her advice and attempted to become AWOL, but unfortunately, his desertion was discovered before he could flee. Number 2 If you head just east of Ansberg, along the shoreline, players are able to come across some peculiar scribblings upon a rock face. Upon inspecting this, Arthur will note these in his journal, giving them the title of Old World Scripts. The texting is written in a Phoenician language, commonly used in ancient Middle Eastern territories. It translates as the following. We arrived by boat. Beautiful land, gracious people. So we left them to live in peace. For number three, we need to travel over to two separate locations. The first being Window Rock, just north of Dodd's Bluff. At this location, players who make their way up the mountain will find these strange paintings upon a rock face. Inspecting this site 
will reveal it to be known as strange statues, as noted in Arthur's journal. Secondly, we need to head on over to the east of Donna Falls. At the location I've marked, there's a cave hidden within the mountainside. Those who enter will stumble across a strange formation of statues. Investigating these will also reveal them to be called the strange statues too. Each statue, using its finger, represents a different number, and upon each one, there's a button that can be pushed. There's a particular sequence that these buttons can be pressed in, which we can learn from the painting we discovered earlier. To solve this puzzle, if players are facing the statues as soon as they enter, looking at them from the position I'm showing, they need to activate the following in the order I present. 2, 3, 5, and then 7. If performed correctly, the harpy statue in the center will open up, granting the player 3 gold bars, which can be sold at any fence for $500 apiece. Number 4. Whilst we were near Window Rock, I mentioned a location named Dodd's Bluff. If you approach this small cabin, you may notice a collection of bullet holes in the wall outside, indicating something may be wrong. Upon entering, you will find the bodies of two separate men, who have seemingly beaten each other to death. A brutal end to both, but for what reason? Well, if you choose to search the cabin, you will discover, upon a table, a golden nugget. It seems that either one, or possibly both of these gentlemen, were prospectors, and fought to the death over riches. In Act 5 Southeast of Emerald Ranch, normally during nightfall, players may have encountered a very odd gentleman who's made camp in the wilderness. The stranger tells the player the following. So you got a girl, mister? Eh, uh, not anymore. Me neither. Got my eye on one, though. I was hunting north of Annisburg when I came across this cabin. And there's no one there but this woman. Bit bony, but beautiful as the day is long. Real elegant fancy type, too. Don't know what she's doing out there in the middle of nowhere, but turns out she's a widow. She asked me to leave, but in a real nice way. M made me feel good. I watched her from the bushes for a while, saw her cry. I think this is a place I could really hang my saddle. A hot dinner and warm bed every night. Mmm, don't sound bad to me at all. The widow that the man is referring to is Charlotte Balfour, whom the players can meet as a stranger mission later in the game, after completing a fork in the road. Closer inspection of his camp reveals just how sick an individual the gentleman is. For number 6, we're heading to the southern town of Rhodes. In the centre of town, players can find the gunsmith store, which is owned and ran by one Jasper Feeney. Upon approaching, as either Arthur or John, a stranger may call to them from the basement. He's a young man who claims he's been kidnapped by the store owner. Initiating this conversation will allow the player to perform a special robbery on Jasper, ordering him to unlock the basement. It's here, if the player chooses to release the prisoner, they can learn of a tragic tale from Jasper and why he kidnapped the young man. Oh, finally! Thank you! Thank you! Oh, oh you, you I'm sorry! Son. Please forgive me. I know it was wrong. I just couldn't face that he was gone. I was teaching Sammy how to hold the rifle proper out by the river. The recoil shot him backwards. He slipped into the river. The water pulled him downstream so quick. It all happened so fast, I didn't know what to do. I searched up and down that riverbank for days. 
but I couldn't find my boy. I just miss him so much. Number seven. If you head to the location I've marked, upon the rocky footpath, players may come across a busted crate. The contents of the crate are that of a stuffed gorilla, who seems to have fallen off a travelling wagon of some sorts. It would appear that the gorilla was heading towards the taxidermist house near Strawberry, until it was lost in transition. Number 8 is a random encounter that can trigger in several places. For me, it occurred north of Van Horn, along the shoreline. Washed up on the beach, players can find a capsized boat, along with the body of a man. Those who attempt to loot the man will discover that he's not actually deceased. With his final breath, he hands the player a letter asking to quote, tell her I never stopped. As always, I'll leave the contents of the letter on screen for a moment for those who wish to pause and read. To summarize, the letter is addressed to a Miss Bonnie McFarlane, whom the now deceased man is in love with. The man sets sail to find his fortune and win the heart of Miss McFarlane. Players of the online version of the game may recognize the referred lady, who can be interacted with as a stranger quest. But for more old school players, they will also remember Bonnie as one of the main characters from the original Red Dead Redemption title back in 2011. 9. Towards the far edge of the map, in West Elizabeth, players can come across a site somewhat similar to the Charles Kinnear reference found in the southern regions. Inspecting the wreckage will prompt the player to make notes in their journal, stating that they have found the wreckage of a flying machine in the woods, some would-be Icarus dead in his dreams. It seems that the pilot was attempting a flight from a nearby cliff face, ultimately falling to his death. Number 10. East of Emerald Ranch is a cabin known as Osman Grove. Upon approaching the residence, players may notice that there are smoke fumes coming from the top of the doorway. If you choose to enter, a horrific and saddening sight will befall you. Inside the home are the remains of an entire family. The father lays at the dinner table, the mother across the floor, the grandmother deceased in her chair, and a child holding onto his toy rocking horse. Also upstairs is an unknown male, presumably the grandfather. Judging by its positions, it would appear that the family was caught off guard. Keen eye players will soon notice the cause of the family's demise. Toward the rear of the cabin, above the stove, you may notice that a pipe has been broken, causing the poisonous smoke to seep into the home. The tragedy shows that the poor family hadn't realized this in time and passed away due to asphyxiation. For number 11, we're traveling down south to the area of tall trees. To the west of Aurora Basin, players can come across an abandoned campsite. It's noted in the game's journal as the Wiki Up, which was primarily used by the Native Americans. This is an earlier indication of the Wapiti Indian tribe, whom we meet later in the story. The tribes will go on to tell how the military would force them to move quite frequently. This seems to be one of their locations before being shifted on to the much larger reservation up north. In at number 12. If you travel to the Grizzlies East around noon, you may encounter a gentleman sitting on the mountainside. The man is a meditating monk, whom the player can have a little fun with if they choose to do so. You okay there? Boo! <laughs> My annoying you! Number 13. In the bayou, there's a remote home that you can come across known as Mossy Flats. Approaching the cabin, players will meet a stranger who beckons them to come and be friends. The interaction goes as follows. What you doing here? 
You looking for a friend? I'll be your friend. <laughs> if you let me. Folks don't don't normally want to be my friend. Okay. So, you hungry? Huh? I got food. I got food inside. Come along. Now come here. Don't you hate old Sonny now? Don't hate him. What? Oh, you struggled. And you lost. But it was quite a tussle, I tell you. Quite a tussle, my pet. <laughs> oh. uh, wh wh huh? Huh? Oh, my lord. Uh. Of course, after the altercation, you can return to the home to find the man is now terrified and locks the door, attempting to keep you away. Deal with this sick individual as you see fit. Number 14 takes us over to the Appleseed Timber Company in West Elizabeth. There are several interactions to be had at this site and for those who choose to explore the area may come across this deceased gentleman, whose cause of death would be apparent to the large fallen tree beside him. From what I can gather, he may appear in different locations on the map, but it's always somewhere near this area. Looting his corpse, you will find a letter addressed from a Professor Crane, the headmaster at St. Luke's Academy. Once again, I'll leave the contents of the letter on screen for a moment for anyone wishing to read. To quickly recap, our deceased individual here, who we now learn to be one Mr. Appleby, has aspirations of becoming a teacher of both history and the sport of fencing. But according to the author of the letter, Mr. Appleby lacks the ability to teach. He had taken this personally and proceeded to threaten the headmaster of St. Luke's by brutally murdering him with a garden hoe. Our final one today at number 15 takes us to the north. If players are to travel to just above the letter N of Amberino on the map, they will come across an old shack. The contents of the shack are somewhat unnerving. Inside the shack are animal bones, chains, flesh pieces, and at the rear, a cauldron of sorts. Approaching the cauldron will prompt the player to drink the mysterious liquid. Those who dare to do so will have the following happen. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was part 3 of our secrets still unseen by some players. If you wish to see more like it, please hit like and subscribe, turn on notifications and share with friends and family or anyone you may feel would be interested in this type of content. Are there any in-game secrets that you feel some players may have missed? Feel free to let us know down in the comment section below. If you wish to get in touch at all, you can do so by finding me over on Instagram, that's at philbygaming. Don't forget to also check out this incredible deal by NordVPN, which is 59% off until the 8th of February 2023. You can find the link to this below in the video description. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil, and I'll see you all in the next one.